And I'm so funny about everything, y'all. Because I know people, let me tell you something about the internet. People will pick you apart on the internet. They will pick you apart. And I want to make sure that we are um, not focusing on me, but focusing on the content. So good morning. My name is Sharonda Parker. Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. I am your host. And today we're going to be talking about triggers. And people say exactly what are triggers. First of all, let me just say this. When you send something to my inbox, if you want a one-on-one -on -one with me, you need to book a session. But if you send it to my inbox, that means it comes out so that the public can learn. And I've said this over and over again. So once you send something to my inbox and you put that it's anonymous, of course it's going to remain anonymous. But the whole purpose of the content is so that other people can learn from it. Okay? So... Ma'am, if you wanted to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, book a session. <laughs> it's, it's very simple. Um, all right. So one thing that I'm constantly talking about when I'm doing sex coaching is triggers. A lot of times people have inf infidelity is nothing new. Infidelity has existed as long as people have existed. Okay. I really want us to understand that this is not anything new because sometimes we have this big old epiphany as if, these things are just starting to happen. And no, these, these are the things that we've been seeing happen in our whole life. And it happened generations before us and generations before that. But if you choose to stay in your marriage, let's talk about that. If you choose to stay in your marriage after the infidelity has happened, sometimes you will experience what's called triggers. Okay? So that's what this live is about today. Triggers. When I was in school and I was studying and getting all my stuff together to become a sex coach, and one of the things that we learned is infidelity has always been equivalent to a death. And people say, why would infidelity be equivalent to a death? Because it's permanent. Because you cannot go back and change it. You cannot go back and and undo it it is equivalent to taking a glass throwing it on the floor it shatters into a zillion pieces and you're trying to put that glass back together in its original form you may put all the pieces back together but the glass is gonna still resemble that it has been broken if you can put the pieces back together because a lot of times, once you shatter the glass, you're going to miss pieces along the way when you're trying to glue it back together. Suppose you glue the whole glass back together. There are going to be cracks and everything in that glass. The, the imperfections will be there to let someone look at it and say, this glass has been shattered. That's infidelity. That's cheating. That's what it looks like. That's about as plain as I can put it. But the reason... Um, it is equivalent to a death is because it is something that's permanent. It cannot be changed. And a lot of times people go through the exact same grieving process. Now that we've gotten that out the way, because I want to answer this person question, but before I can answer the question, I got to lay the foundation about triggers. When my mom died, I had a voicemail on my phone and you know how when someone dies, you keep going back and you looking at pictures. And I, for me, it was hearing her. So I wanted to hear her. So what I would do is just constantly play this voicemail over and over and over and over again. And I had this voicemail in my phone. And what I realized that every time I played the voicemail, I was not in a better place afterwards. I was actually worse off than what I was before I played the voicemail. Real talk. But I would continue to play this voicemail over and over and over again. And what I had to come to realize was this voicemail is a trigger. Why do I keep going back to play this voicemail when it is a trigger? So one day I woke up and I made a conscious decision to take control of my life and I deleted the voicemail. 
guess what? I no longer had that trigger. In that moment, I accepted death. If you continue to go and stalk the other woman page and you involved in her life and you know your husband had a relationship with this woman, but you keep going back to this woman page over and over and over again every day, that is a trigger. And one day you have to make the decision to say, I'm going to block this woman's page. That way I can't access the page to see what she got going on. And that day you will accept that your husband cheated and you can move forward if you want to. However you want to, because sometimes you don't necessarily have to, just because you're moving forward don't mean that you got to stay in the marriage. But that day you can move forward. But until you make a conscious decision, you will never, ever heal. So let's go on with the reason I'm doing this video today. And I'm just, because this, this is long, y'all, but I'm not reading all this. So, long story short, best friend has a boyfriend that she lives with. Best friend is cheating on her boyfriend. Best friend contacts me and tells me about all of these experiences and these sneaky link-ups, and it gives me anxiety. It gives me flashbacks about my husband cheating on me. Like last night, she said he give her butterflies and he make her feel young and he make her feel so good. And how she just even hate going home to her boyfriend because this other man just got her feeling brand new. Then when I talk to my husband, I automatically start feeling salty because I'm wondering when he was away, with the other woman, did she make him feel all of these ways that my best friend is feeling when she with this man? My best friend is smiling. She happy. And I'm like, damn, was my husband this happy? Basically, this woman ruined the whole date night because of a trigger. So I'm not going to go into the all of the details because the foundation of this video is about triggers. So let me just say this. We pick and choose what people feed us, meaning mentally. If you know you can't handle certain conversations, as a best friend, you got to talk to your best friend and say, look, friend, I'm happy that you happy because I love to see you happy. But I just really would appreciate if you don't share that with me because it takes me to a very bad place. And that's how you handle that. And it's not that you're not happy for your friend being happy. It's just that you got to protect your peace. If you work, I'm going to use, see, a, a lot of people don't understand triggers can be anything. See, when you find out about infidelity, and especially if you're one of them people that's like, I want to know everything y'all did. I want to know what hotel you went to. I want to know what restaurant she took her to. I want to know everything. I want to know how you fucked her. I want to know. And, and you one of them people and you want all of the details about the infidelity. I promise you, you're setting yourself up. you setting yourself up for mental torture. Because when he tell you, oh, we was at the, uh, we was at the rental. I, I I got a room at the Renaissance on Blue Bonnet. Every time you pass by the Renaissance on Blue Bonnet, trigger. Oh, I took her out to eat at the Red Lobster over there across the street from the mall by Blue Bonnet. <laughs> Every time you see the Red Lobster, trigger. Guess what? Every time you drive down Blue Bonnet, it's a trigger. But you got a job. And the easy way to get to your job is to go on Blue Bonnet. Do you want to think about the infidelity every day before you go start your day at work? Because Blue Bonnet is the easier route? Or are you going to make a conscious decision to just take another route? Even if it takes you an additional five minutes. If it's going to protect your peace, take another route. If it's going to protect your peace, 
Because the, the thing that we have to understand about in life, you got, I'll, I always tell people this, especially in sex coaching. We got what we fantasize and want life to be. That's the fantasy. That's the illusion of what we think our marriage should be, what we think our relationship should be. And then we got the other side of it, of I can't, it's just the worst. Uh, I don't see no light. I don't think we can ever move past this. And then you got the reality of this is what my relationship is. Infidelity happened. I accepted it. Sharonda, why are you saying that the woman accepted the infidelity? Because you're still there. That's 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 what we got to sit in. We got to sit in that you accepted it and you accepted it because you're still there. If you did not accept it, you would not be there. That's the truth. And a lot of times we like to play around with the truth in our mind. We like to play mental games with ourselves as if, Oh, I ain't accepting this and I ain't putting up with that bitch as you is. You putting up with all of it and you accepted all of it because you still there. Be real with you. If you ain't going to be real with nobody else, be real with yourself. So now that we have accepted it and we calling a thing a thing, we have to make certain choices, decisions. And one of the choices is I have to take an alternate route to work that gives me an additional five minutes of drive time to protect my peace because I know I'm not going anywhere and I'm not leaving my husband. And in order for me to move forward and protect my peace and I have to deal with all of these triggers, I take an alternative route. There it is. Best friend, you not married, you living your best life, you still out here trying to figure it all out. I completely understand that. However, I got some other shit going on. And when I talk to you, I really needed to be on the up and up about some shit that ain't so heavy. Because when I'm not talking to you anymore, all that shit you told me still be on my mind. And it takes me to a place that I don't necessarily like to go. So, when we talk, I don't want to hear about that. That's how you got to approach that with your best friend. You don't approach it by going tell the boyfriend that she cheating because you're trying to fix some shit that ain't your business. You don't approach it by completely cutting your best friend off for making a decision for her life. No. You ain't got to stop being friends with somebody that's your best friend because they doing shit. No, that's not your place. We don't get to... We don't get to, um, you know, dictate how people live their life. We don't get to do that. Okay? So, let me see questions, concerns, comments before I get off into all of this holiday humping stuff. Let's see. And um, on yesterday, a lot of ladies, they felt some type of way about my video, but y'all gonna be okay. One thing that I know is a lot of times when I'm dealing, especially with women, uh, they a lot of times when I deal with stuff holding us accountable for stuff, a lot of times we don't like to hear that. Every time you take the long way, you're gonna think about why you going that long ass way. Everything triggers infidelity. It's just the strength and love of the reality of the infidelity that keeps you, that helps you to deal with those triggers. Self and reality checks. I completely, I, I completely agree with you that everything does trigger infidelity. But I also feel like certain things that go on, we make a choice on what we want to deal with. Just like I used the, the, the example of me making a choice to delete the voicemail from my mother. If I'm doing certain things not to put it in my face, Every day, eventually, the noise in your mind quiets down. And the thing is, when certain things happen, especially when it's fresh, you got to come up with ways to quiet the noise down in your mind. 
because your mind is very powerful and your mind will get to working on you in a way that you have no idea. You will be trying to figure out how did I get here? So if there's a way to quiet your mind down, you do that for yourself. But then again, you have certain people that no matter what goes on, they have no intention on trying to move forward and they want to sit in that. And if you're one of those people who just want to sit in it, the healing will never take place. And that's the truth. Let's see. I'm just looking. Do, 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 do. If you have time to impose on someone else's relationship, you're not investing into your own relationship. That is so true. That is so true. That is so true. All right, so that is going to wrap up my discussion on triggers. And as you can see, I have a table full of goodies. I have the Christmas shot glasses. This is going to be real fast. Christmas shot glasses. The naughty and nice reversible Santa hat. I have the I love cock socks. All of these are like gag gifts. I have the 12 days of Christmas sex calendar. 12 different things to do. The vibrating pan is with the remote control in red for the holidays. Under the mistletoe, couples, uh, couples Christmas game. Really for swingers though. But we have that. Drinking Christmas game. We have that. A confessions Christmas game. We have that. Santa's secret sex positions. We have this. And we also have all of the cute little sex toys and all types of little kinky stuff and sleeves for men and all of that that could be hung on Christmas trees because they have the little ribbons to be able to hang them, okay? That concludes my live for today. Come see me here at the PPG store. We open up at 11 a.m. I will be glad to assist you today. I will be here working. Um, and a lot of y'all saying, well, I don't get to see you. You got to come when I'm here. You got to come when I'm here. You all be blessed. And if you didn't look at that, um, Fred, what is his name is? Fredo Bangs. Not like, not like the potato chips. He said his name was Fredo. Lord, did you see the video with him and the girl? I was like, we just got to do better with teaching our children how to court, how courtship go. Because this child went from... I don't know your name. I want to get with you. We can take over the world. I need you to be a stepdaddy to my kids. So I'm going to fuck you up if I see you with another woman. And this was all in 20 minutes of talking to this man. We got to do better. We're teaching the proper way to court. She went from, she was a basic bitch. She was a project bitch. She was a, she was calling herself this. She was section eight. She said she was all of these things. But. This is what I'm talking about because a lot of people got offended yesterday about the video that I did about uh, wanting a six-figure man. But a lot of times what 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 y'all missed in the whole video was it wasn't necessarily about the woman having money. It was about she didn't even have the mental capacity to be able to hold a conversation with somebody of, of this particular income bracket that she trying to get into. Because the thing is, you can get the man, but, but once he get past your appearance and your look, Meaning the uh, attraction is the initial thing that get people to hook up. So once he get past your attraction and he sees there's no substance there, you're not going to keep him. So to all of the ladies in the group that felt some type of way, that was like, she makes six figures too. She got to write the one what she want. Yes, she does have a right to one what she want. But guess what? Even when she get what she want, is it going to last? No. Especially if you got a damn bird brain. Oh, I just feel like he took advantage of her. No, he did not. He did a session with her live, something that she should have paid for. But he did it for free, and he did it live. And guess what? She had no substance. And when he asked her what she could bring to the table, the woman said she could bring a Gordon. And those are the facts. A lot of times we like to look at what we think things should be. A lot of times we like to look at men as just he was the uh, aggressor. And he was all of this kind of stuff, but I look at things as reality of what it actually was. I looked at the facts. I watched the video several times to lay out the facts. And he was being about as polite about it as he could possibly be, 
But sometimes because it was coming from a man who a lot of people, own, oh, he a gay man. You threw his sexuality in there. In other words, everything that he said wasn't valid because he may be gay. But I'm one of them people. I'm not homophobic. I don't care about sexuality. So the thing is, if he was coming with some substance and some dropping jewels and some facts, I can hear that from anything. But these are the same people that would be like, who no, he can't. Oh, this particular pastor can't tell me nothing because they drink. This pastor can't tell me nothing because they hit the weed every now and then. Well, guess what? If you got a word from God and I feel like you got anointing on your life, you get as drunk as you want to get and you smoke as many blunts as you want to smoke, that ain't got nothing to do with the anointing that's on your life. But some people can't separate the two. It take a real intelligent person to be able to separate the two. And a lot of people can't do that. And I understand it. I have I've been come to the conclusion that a lot of people can't separate certain things because 